welcome to DCU TV News. I'm Cot Cadden. And I'm Karen Gaffney. Today we'll be looking at some of the top stories that have taken place over the past two weeks. On Friday, DCUSU held a protest outside the Department of Justice to fight against the deportation of University of Sanctuary student Shepard Machaya. Aoife Horan reports. On Friday, DCUSU gathered outside the Department of Justice to protest against the deportation of DCU University of Sanctuary student Shepard Makaya. I don't know how to thank you. You left your important things to come and support me. Thank you very much. A 40 minute silent vigil was held in the peaceful protest. It was attended by students from across Ireland's universities. Uh, Shepard is a member of the student community throughout Ireland, and I think when one member of our community is under attack, we stand up, we fight back. Uh, if there is any uh, scintilla of humanity, compassion or justice in the Department of Justice, they will immediately revoke this deportation order and allow uh, Shepherds to Boyd Barrett brought the case up in the Dáil on Tuesday, but Flanagan refused to speak on individual cases in the Dáil. Shepherd's future in Ireland is still uncertain. This has been Aoife Horan for DCU TV News. A DCU Students' Union sabbatical officer delivered an address during the first class rep council of the year about being present at the controversial ANF AGM on October 4th, reported by Koch Cadden. DCUSU VP for Engagement and Development, Carol McGovern, gave a statement on his attendance at the controversial ANF AGM during the first class rep council of 2018-2019. At the AGM, uh, I wasn't in my SU capacity. I was there as a previous chairperson of the society. I assure you, I have no part of the organisation or running of the AGM. I um, approve what went on. I didn't know what was planned. I'm devastated that this has happened. The situation got out of control. I didn't know what to do. Or should I should have, I should have intervened. I regret it. I'm not only sorry to everyone that's involved, I'm sorry to all these two students. This shouldn't and won't happen again. McGovern gave his statement after Chairperson of Femsoc, Amy Colgan, questioned all sabbaticals on whether they were present at the ANF AGM. I'm Coach Cadden with DCU TV News. Neve Quinlan, Shauna Burtis and Lauren Allen take to DCU campus to gain a better insight into the voting trends of fellow DCU students on the presidential election. Voting for the presidential election is set to take place on Friday the 26th of October. Current President Michael D. Higgins will be running for a second term despite stating that he would only serve a single term as president in his 2011 inauguration. This is the first election in 42 years that a president will be facing contests for a second term by a political party. I think I'm going to vote for Michael D. I'm going to vote for Michael D. Higgins. I think for me, I'll be voting for Michael D. Higgins because I was really impressed at what he's done in the past seven years. Um, I know there's a bit of controversy surrounding payments of money at the moment, but I think out of the current candidates that are um, in the running as well, I just feel he's the best. He, I think he represents the best of Ireland. He's a Gael Gore. He's a passionate for Irish culture, and he's an advocate for gender equality. Michael D. Higgins is favourite to win at 67% public preference, according to an Irish Times poll. This puts him 55 points ahead of second favourite Sean Gallagher. At least 3.2 million of the registered voters are expected to vote on Friday. Um, I did some sort of research. I have like a small a bit of an interest in politics and everything, so I like to at least know something before I vote. I feel like you really need to go out of your way to get the information. Um, it's hard. Not that much information is like given to us, like on Twitter or Instagram or anything like that. You really need to be looking at like news websites to find information. Uh, I don't know. No, I'm actually probably not going to vote, to be honest. I think there's just not a lot. Especially, it's more about just the like controversies around. You don't really find out about what they do and what their plans are. You find just more about like stuff they've done and bad stuff about them. As many of the campaigners have avoided using ballot posters in order to be more environmentally friendly, social media was expected to be the main platform of campaigning. However, still, students feel out of the loop and are confused about what they're going to vote. Lauren Allen, DCU TV News.
Aoife O'Brien and On Your Boy reported on the recent campaign launch to tackle the third level funding crisis. DCU, along with Ireland's six other universities, have launched the Save Our Spark campaign, encouraging the public to demand that the government tackles the funding crisis in third level education. State funding per college student in Ireland at €5,000 is barely half of what it was a decade ago. We spoke to government TD Noel Rock about the need for meaningful reform for higher education. Uh, I think Irish universities are doing a good job with the funding they have, but we can do better in terms of both funding the sector better and in terms of performing better. Uh, DCU is a model of this. DCU in many sectors is punching well above its weight, but in order to make those next steps forward, we need more funding and more focus on where we can improve and how we can improve. The launch of the Save Our Spark campaign comes just as the European Investment Bank has announced €100 million Euro in funding for four development projects in Trinity College Dublin, including development of the E3 Institute in Engineering, Energy and Environment, refurbishment of the arts block, expansion of the law school and new student accommodation at Trinity Halls. With funding across all third level institutions such a prevalent issue, I'm here on DCU's Glasnevin campus to gauge students' reaction to the Save Our Spark campaign and Trinity College Dublin's 100 million euro investment loan. Yeah, it's extremely important for the development of the universities. I mean, when you look at um, DCU's involvement with the finance department, they're talking about cutting spending, uh, that's in sport in law, in business, they're constantly talking about cutting, so with this uh, campaign it will develop the universities. It's going to take pressure off the housing crisis in Dublin, there's such a shortage at the minute and any little bit of help. Yeah. To take action to secure the future of education in Ireland. Aoife O'Brien, DCU TV News. Wednesday, October 4th was National Plastic Free Day. Avian Bryant, Orla Dwyer and Emily Sheehan report on DCU's attempt at reducing its plastic waste. Wednesday, October 17th is Plastic Waste Free Day on DCU campus. This is also happening in 15 other third level institutions across the country. The initiative by the Union of Students in Ireland hopes to draw attention to the excessive use of plastic. On the Glasnevin campus, Londis has made an effort to cut down on their plastic waste. So we're the first Londis store not to have plastic bags for life. Uh, Londis now actually have uh, made the cloth tote bags available for all of its stores. We have taken biodegradable bags for uh, our produce. Dr David Robbins believes that the university could do more. They could ban um, single-use cups from Starbucks and the other coffee outlets. Um, and force people to bring their keep cups or to buy a reusable cup there um, or use compostable cups. That would be the next step. Um, I think they've made a very good start, certainly. DCU Sustainable Living Society tells us how we can reduce the amount of plastic. It's not realistic to say to somebody, don't eat this, don't eat that, like especially when it comes to things like we all love our snacks, we love our crisps, we love our pizzas, buy and look. <laughs> Um, because when you buy a bulk packaging, you have less to get rid of instead of like individual packets. We talked to staff and students in DCU to get their thoughts on Plastic Waste Free Day. Firstly, I don't think going plastic free by 2020 is soon enough to go plastic free. I think it should have been done over the summer. I don't think it's that big an operation to take plastic in DCU. I don't think we're doing enough uh, in the university because it'll take an effort by all. And we need more kind of glass, I suppose. Uh, reusable cups or gel cups, simple little things. You can't just walk over and get like a plastic cup of water anymore or like plastic utensils are harder to get. Like I actually have noticed a literal difference, yeah. Yeah, well I try to use them less now um, just in relation to the environment and obviously you work in a university where you're trying to make sure that uh, you're trying to be a, an example in these type of uh, situations. With the deadline of 2020, DCU is still far away from kicking its plastic cap. That's all for now. Join us on the next DCU TV news broadcast in a fortnight. I'm Karen Gaffney. And I'm Koch Kazan. Goodbye. Goodbye.